Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number two for chapter four. This is an additional video. The content of this video might not be covered in a standard sophomore level course. But it's accessible, so don't let that scare you. I'm sure you'll be able to understand it. Okay, after all the prep talk, now let's look at the corresponding Arbo theorem for system of linear equations. We have encountered Arbo theorem for second order linear equations. Now we want to extend this to a system of n equations where n is bigger than two. Okay, so let's read the statement of the theorem first. So let now y1, y2, yn be an linearly independent solution to the equation, the homogeneous equation L applied to y equals zero. That's the linear differential operator, which we can write out in detail. That means this equation, okay, equals zero and uh, valid on an interval for t between a and b. Let now w be the Voronskian determinant of these functions. Okay, I just call it Voronskian. We know it's a determinant we need to compute. Of these, uh, okay, so the Voronskian of these n functions. Then the Voronskian w as the function of t will be a solution of a first order linear equation written as w prime minus p n minus 1 of t w equals 0 and valid on the interval t between a and b. So um, this function here is the same function as this coefficient function in front of the y to the n minus 1 derivative term. Okay, And then remember the first term is with constant one in front of y to the nth derivative. Okay, so the Voronskian actually um, satisfies this first order linear equation on the interval from a to b. And then this we know how to solve, and that's what this course began with. So let's write out, you can write this as wt will be a, a function, an arbitrary constant c times exponential of negative of p and minus 1 t dt, okay, valid for t between a and b. Okay, um, my apology, there is a wrong sign here. This is actually a plus. Okay, so how about proving the theorem? So the proof could be found in most advanced texts on differential equations. The basic argument here is similar to the one we used for the case n equals 2, but since here n is uh, bigger than 2, it could be, then the computations are somewhat more involved. And uh, we will need to also compute the derivatives of a determinant of n times n matrix. Okay, but all those are actually rather feasible, so let's try to prove it. Okay, let's try to do a rather brief proof. Okay, let's recall first the definition of the Voronskian determinant. W is uh, the following, is the determinant of this matrix. First row is all these y's, and the second row is the derivative, and the third row is differentiate one more time, and you keep going, the nth row is the n minus one derivative of all the y's. Okay, so just recall that definition because we need to differentiate this guy. Okay, so what will be the um, derivative of that Voronsky determinant? So we know that the definition of the determinant and each term in the determinant is a product of n terms, n entrance in there. So by the product rule, we can actually write out um, the 
y pr and w prime here, we can break it up into n terms, where we differentiate each row, okay, one row at a time. So, okay, so the first term will be taking the definition of the Voronskian and differentiate the first row. So the first row originally is y1, y2, yn, now becomes the prime, okay? And then the second term will be um, differentiating the second row. So the first row now is the original one, and then the second row originally is this guy, now I differentiate it once, so it becomes y double prime. And then I copy the rest, okay? And then we do that for each row until the last term. So all these previous n minus one terms are the same as the n one in w, but the last one we differentiate it one more time. So the last one was uh, y to the um, n minus one derivative. Now it becomes y to the nth derivative. Okay. So um, we see that. Um, okay, so these terms are marked in red. Those are the ones that we differentiated at each time. So, and then each of these matrix is taking the determinant. So I take determinant of this, determinant of this, plus and the determinant of that. Okay, so there are totally n terms. So how do we figure out the determinant of each terms? Well, Fortunately, we make the uh, following observation. Let's look at the first matrix here. We see that by differentiating the first row, now the first row and the second rows, these two rows are the same. Okay, and if two rows are the same, then we know that the determinant is zero. Okay, so this is zero. And then the same thing happens here for the second term and this row and this row are the same. So it's zero, the determinant. And all these happens for all the previous n minus one terms. The only term that is non-zero is the last term. The last matrix that you want to compute the determinant, we don't have that, two rows are identical. Okay, so this is the only non-zero term that will contribute to W prime. Okay, now let's um, conclude um, the discussion we've had. We can drop all the zero terms and just pick one term that is non-zero for Y prime. Y prime simply equal to this expression. So what will this determinant be? Okay, so let's do some smart manipulation and smart observation. So we see that all the yi's are solutions. So here I write down, even write out the i's column here. Okay, if, so if yi's are all solutions, then it satisfies the um, equation. And then we can um, keep the yi to the nth derivative to the left hand side and move everything else to the right hand side. So we can express this in terms of all the lower derivatives. Okay, so in particular, you can think this term actually is uh, summing up all these terms. Now, what we do next is um, this operation that we have learned in um, computing the determinant of a matrix we have learned that if we take one row, multiply it by a constant, and add it to another row, that does not change the determinant. Okay, this is something we learned. So we're going to use that to manipulate. So what we will do is that we will now multiply each row here with a, a specific coefficient, and then we'll add them to the last row. Okay, so for the first row, we will multiply it with P naught. Okay, and then I'll have P naught times Yi, and I add it on to the last row, to the Yn, 
yi to the power n, and then we see that um, this guy here equals to this, and it contains this term, which will exactly cancel what you are adding to. Okay, so let's say after that, this term is cancelled. Now, um, the second row, I will multiply it with uh, p1. Okay, and then I do the same, and I multiply this by p1 and add it on to my yi. My yi here has a p1 yi prime term, then we see that this term will be cancelled. Okay, and uh, let's continue. And then let's multiply the third one with the p2. And then we have um, p2 times yi double prime adding on top of this, which is this guy here. And we will have this term, which will exactly be cancelled, the term previous here. Okay, and then we continue until the second last uh, row, and then that row, we would uh, multiply this with, uh, um, let's use yellow color, and p to the um, n minus 2, okay? And if you multiply this on that, and then you add on top of this guy, which is this one here now, then you see that it cancels this term. Now we see that after these n minus 1 steps, then the last row in that matrix is replaced by this. So the i-th term is replaced. It was yi to the nth derivative. Now it becomes negative p n minus 1 yi to the n minus 1 derivative. Okay. Okay, so um, now this has quite some useful um, implications by changing the, the, the last row is all now changed. Okay, so let's now clean up and write it in. So um, now the W prime can be written as follows. And that's the only non-zero term, and it's been simplified to this form. With the we pull the negative sign out. I have p n minus one times y one to the n minus one derivative. Here's y two, and all the way to y n. Okay. So um, this last row here, we see that each term is multiplied by the same factor of uh, negative p of n minus 1. Okay, then by the property of the determinant, we can take um, this term out, and uh, the determinant of this will be just uh, negative p n minus 1 times the determinant of the remaining. So here becomes y1 to the n minus 1, y2 to the n minus 1, so on. We took out the p term. Okay, and then that is really nice because we see that what's this determinant here? Well, that's exactly the Voromskian determinant. Okay, so let's write out that's just exactly negative p and minus 1 times w. Okay, if uh, we move this term to the left, and that is exactly the equation we stated in the Arbo theorem for the Voromskian. Okay, therefore we completed the proof. Okay, so um, um, that's the end of the proof, and uh, I hope you agree with me that isn't too bad, and it's impossible to grasp, and uh, that's all I have to say, and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.